brothers and sisters. First of all, I would like to thank you for your prayers on our behalf. And we are very glad that in the triumph of God's love that you prayed, the Lord kept us in his mighty arms and took us from place to place and brought us back to Sugarland, Texas. We are very glad and we are very thankful and grateful to our God and to the assembly, the saints. We thank God. Romans 12, 12. Romans 12, 12. Be joyful in hope, persevering in affliction or tribulation, devoted to prayer, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, affliction, continuing instant in prayer. May the Lord bless us as he would lead us, as he has a word for today, these times. Loving Father, we are very grateful to you, O oh, wonderful Lord, that you have bought us and you have brought, uh, you have redeemed us, you have delivered us, and you have washed us with your own precious blood, the blood of the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. O oh, Lord, we are very grateful for your wonderful faithfulness throughout all these years, and especially the seven months that have gone by. We are very grateful, oh, wonderful Lord, for granting us from your blessed hands this time of prayer, fasting and prayer. Oh Lord, may our fasting and may our praying and may our sharing, oh Lord, be acceptable to you. So cleanse us, wash us, sanctify us to yourself, O oh, wonderful Lord, and bring your oracles, your word, today in our midst. Yes, Lord, we want to hear you, your voice, your word, and O oh, wonderful Lord, that we may be found according to your will, according to your desire, according to your pleasure, and also according to your everlasting, overarching purpose, that is your Son, and in Him, gathering together all of the earth and all of the heavenlies. And we may be found, O Lord, in that body, the Christ, O Lord, so that we may be able to yes, see you soon as you would arrive. You would come, O oh Lord. Prepare us. Make us eager. Make us the ones who love you uttermost, O oh Lord, as you have loved us. Wonderfully, Lord, we ask all this in the wonderful and most highly exalted name of our blessed Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, uh, Brother A.B. sent me a message that would the servant be able to bring the word? And you have been praying for this word. And so I'm grateful. So the Lord has spoken in my heart and he shall speak today, right now. This is the word of God. This is his heart. This is his desire. Beloved, remember, all that the Lord deals with us is the loving, chastening, but purposeful dealing of God. God deals with us in his son, through his spirit, 
in all the circumstances that he brings around us, all the people and everything, dearly beloved, it is the loving, chastening, dealing of God with a purpose. So even this time, as we have gathered together, fasting and praying, this is also his loving, dealing with us with a purpose. Dearly beloved, remember this. So may we come with open hearts, devoted hearts and minds. As we read, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and devoted in prayer, or devoted to prayer. The Lord has given us this word today, and it is the normal praying believer. The normal praying believer and the normal praying church. It is the normal aspect. It is being normal, common in the word of God, in the spirit of God, that we are praying people, that we are a praying assembly, that we are a praying church. So that's what the Lord wants to talk to us today. So dearly beloved, as of old times, Simeon and Anna, they used to gather for decades in the house of God, looking for the redemption of Israel. Dearly beloved, the transition, the great change that the Lord would bring to Israel through his son. And they, he had prepared a praying group of people because it is said that they used to speak and they spoke, both of them, to those who were awaiting in Jerusalem, in that temple, day after day, year after year, looking for the Messiah. And when they saw the Messiah, the Messiah, they said, now let thy servant depart in peace, dearly beloved. So the people of peace, people of expectation, people of waiting, saints, believers of waiting at the throne of grace. So this is what we are. And so here we, we now we see also, according to Luke chapter 24, Verses 48 to 53, uh, as I said, because to save time, uh, the displayed uh, word would be read because there is much to be said today. The Lord speaks. I am not speaking. I am just a mouthpiece. So uh, Luke chapter 24 and verses 48 to 53, over there we read in Luke's gospel in the last part wonderfully, that 48, 24, 48, and it reads, You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands, and bless them. <clears throat> While he was blessing them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they, after worshipping him, returned to Jerusalem with great joy <clears throat> and were continually in temple praising God. <clears throat> Loving Father, once again we thank you. Oh Lord, we see here dearly beloved that <clears throat> These were the people, we know from uh, Acts chapter 1, that there were 100 and, uh, 120, all of them. And they were taught by the Lord, the risen Lord, for 40 days. So they were immersed in the word of God, the living word Jesus Christ himself, teaching them all the purpose of God in those 40 days. Dearly beloved, as 
Moses was in the presence of the Lord for 40 days. The Lord prepared this company, these believers, with his own son, overseeing over them, shepherding them, bishop of their souls and spirits, teaching them, and must be praying also at the same time. So these people were saturated with the word of God. These people were saturated with the prayers of the head himself. Dearly beloved, remember, when we gather together, it is and for prayer. It is the Christ that is in us that prays to the Christ that is in the heavenlies. It is the mysterious body of Christ himself that prays to God, the Father in the heavenlies. So remember this. So these are the people. And here we see, read, that he led them out as far as Bethany. The he, so these were the people, they are called out people. Who Remember, dear, dearly beloved, these are the last days. And the Lord wants people to know him and to know the times. And remember, he is in all times together with us. And he makes us understand the times according to his desire, his plan. So do not look at anything else, but look at the Lord Jesus and everything that is happening. And as time goes by, it is more and more and more of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Remember. And he, all the darkness, all the immorality, all that is ungodly, which is coming out in its full form and full vigor, dearly beloved, the Lord wants to shine in his church, in his people who are saturated in the word of God, who are prayers themselves. Really remember that. We are prayers according to Psalm 109 and verse 4. He is very wonderful. David says, I am prayer. Dearly beloved, remember that. There's the affliction. The people, of, uh, people are coming against David and so much more. They reject his love. They reject his uh, uh, reconciling uh, attitude. Dearly beloved, this is the same thing. The people of uh, the world and the uh, so-called norm, uh, uh, nominal Christians have rejected the love of Christ as the love of Christ is revealed in his beloved church in this world at this time. So we are the people saturated and taught by himself. It's not by anybody else. And he has sent people filled with his Holy Spirit over the decades, over this world. And we have had, dearly beloved, the testimony of Christ Jesus in saints like Brother Buck Singh and his many others of his dear ones that have departed now, and also Brother Watchman Nee and so many others, and T. Austin Sparks and so many others. And he has kept the same ones the same spirit speaking to us day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Oh, dearly beloved. So be aware of this fact. So we must be assured and we must stand on this assurance that we are called out people. We are led. We are the people who are led. The praying, normal praying believer is a led person. The normal praying assembly church is a led assembly, led by the head himself. So this is the characteristic we want to know today when we want to come to pray, to stand as the valid people, people who are approved by God, people who are qualified by God. People who are given the merit of Christ and nothing else, dearly beloved. So we are 
led people. We are called people. Then we are faithful people. Remember that. We are faithful people. And we are fervent people. Why? Because we see uh, Acts chapter 1 and we'll read there verses 8 to 14. We'll keep our eyes there and we'll come to know and we'll understand as the Lord speaks to us out of his word. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 on, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part. Go on. And when he had spoken this thing, while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud, received him out of the sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up to heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you, heaven, shall come so in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. They return they unto Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, Zealotus, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer, supplication with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with the Lord's brethren. So, dearly beloved, here we see that they follow the mandate. Immediately, they come down from the Mount Olivet, and they go into the city of Jerusalem. And they go into the place, dearly beloved, you'll be surprised. If you go to Jerusalem, this, this upper room is in a place called Zion, actually. Yes, that's the abode where... David used to be there. David's uh, tomb is not far from there, dearly beloved. So here they come. They come and they, they followed his leading. And when they come here and they, they, they came from the Mount Olivet, as we read in Luke's Gospel 24, that they worshipped him. They were full of joy. So these people, dearly beloved, preparing for the great change, the great transition, which is about to break in in 10 days' time. Oh, dearly beloved, the, the Lord's mind is this, this day. Simon, Anna, these 120. Simon and Anna waited for the Messiah. These assembly is waiting for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The mysterious Holy Spirit coming into the bodies of believers to make them the living Christ, whose the head is in heaven, the body is on the earth. And so the great change is coming. Great transformation is coming. Oh, dearly beloved, now we are in the third phase and this third phase is the Lord is coming. His kingdom is coming. So we have to be these people, just like these people, just like this. Normal praying believers, normal praying church who are filled with the Holy Spirit, who are filled with the teaching of the Lord himself, the head, and also worshipping full of joy. Dearly beloved. So here we see these, these are the people. And they are given a mandate. These, there are two people. The Lord does not tell them. How he is going to return. But the king is gone. But his heralds. Heavenly beings are there telling them. What is the king going to do. For them. And it is. He will come. The, way, the same manner. He has gone away. In the same manner. He is coming back. So these are the two heralds. Heralding of the coming of the Messiah. Dearly beloved. So we are in this waiting period. And so like Simeon of old. Hannah of old. These 120 
beings when filled with the Holy Spirit, dearly beloved, in 10 days' time, we are to await our Lord and our Savior soon, dearly beloved. So we must be these dearly pe the people. So what is it, dearly beloved? We have to be joyful in hope. Joyful in hope, Romans 12, 12. We have to be patient in affliction. We have to be devoted in prayer. You see these people, they have the same characteristic. They were filled with joy. We read in the last part of 24th chapter of Luke. They worshipped him. When filled with joy, they came. So we must worship him. We must be joyful in the hope. The hope is given to them. He is coming in the same manner, the way he went away. So dearly beloved, remember this. We are the people. We are the separated people. We are, we are aliens in this world. So be careful, dearly beloved. So now we have to be very, very watchful. We have to be very, very um, uh, going back again and again to all that the Lord has been talking to us, speaking to us, our salvation, our redemption, our deliverance, our walk, our filled with the Holy Spirit, our prayer life. So dearly beloved, these days, the Lord, the Lord is preparing a people who are praying people People who are just as he prepared them, dearly beloved, for the coming of the Holy Spirit, for the coming of the Messiah. He's preparing his church for the coming of the Son of God. And to come, especially at the end of the thousand years, dearly beloved, he will come with the kingdom. And all that is ungodly, all that is completely uh, means against God, will be completely removed. The world and all ungodly people, the nominal Christians, are now being made ready for judgment. We are being made ready for Bima, where we will be the, the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ, where there will be prize distribution. Oh, dearly beloved. So there are two things we are waiting for. The judgment. That's not for us, but the Bhima. So, dearly beloved, be patient. Be patient. So, dearly beloved, remember this. Now, what should we be? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32 onwards. I'll, I'll read it. Hebrews chapter 10. We are just like these people. Dear, remember, and the writer of the Hebrews wrote to this afflicted uh, Jews who had become believers. And so we are in the same time, same kind of uh, uh, persecution and same kind of, not in America, but in many places, but in many workplaces, even, even in America, people experience this. So the 32nd verse of chapter 10, but remember the former days when after being enlightened, you endured great conflict of suffering. Dear beloved, there is great conflict of suffering. Every believer, wherever he is or she is, he is, is being under the attack of the enemy on the mind, on the soul, on the spirit, in the family life, in the church life. There is an attack, dearly beloved. And we do suffer. If we do not suffer, then we are not on the right track. But if we, if we do suffer mentally in the turmoil of the soul, in the grips of the evil ones that tries to squeeze our spirit, but when our spirits are developed and grown under the leading and the filling of the Holy Spirit, dearly beloved, we have to endure, verse endure a great conflict of suffering. And the endure, the same word is used 
be patient be patient in affliction be patient in affliction now verse 36 for you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of god you may receive what was promised dearly beloved our prayer must be that we need a patience we need endurance and we must do the will of god and so we pray for all these things patience the will of god to be done in our life and then we will receive the promise not now god has given many promises and it is wonderfully said in the second uh, book of peter the second letter of peter everything is given to us for godliness and for being perfect dearly beloved so remember this endurance patience that you have done the will of god when we are assured our prayer must be this oh lord make us understand and make us the people who are sure that we have done your will we have done your will and then lord according to your time may the promise be fulfilled in, on our behalf why dearly beloved why? Because it is said, verse 37, For yet in a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he sinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. The word of God says in the Old Testament here, dearly beloved, that the Lord does not want anyone who go back, who shrink back, who do not wait for and be patient in suffering and not wait for the outcome, the result. But the last verse wonderfully says, 39th verse, but we are not those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to persevering of the soul. Dearly beloved, remember, our souls are very important. Soon the time is coming. Soon the time is coming. This six, six, six which had a dry run in this vaccine of this uh, so-called COVID. Dearly beloved, this six, six, six is coming when people who will take that mark will be soulless. Soulless people cannot be saved. Soulless people cannot be saved. Their souls will be killed. They will be attached to the great beast, dearly beloved. And it is the AI which is preparing, which is preparing a great, great matrix that the people who do not know the Lord and who are after the perfection of humanity, perfect health, perfect society, perfect economy, and all this sick perfection, human perfection will come. Yes, dearly beloved. And people will say, we do not need anything and anyone apart from this great humanity. And this AI is driven by the evil one. When Sundar Pichai, the proponent of AI in Google was asked, who, how is it doing? What is it? Who is this that is trying to do this? And Sundar Pichai said, I do not know. I do not know. Dearly beloved, be aware. This technology we will use for the glory of God. But we will be aware of the fact that we are not becoming the part of the matrix of 666. Six, six. It's soon coming. So dearly beloved, we are not ones to fall away. But we are the ones, according to Hebrews chapter 12, and here we see that we have come, dearly beloved, to Mount Zion. We have come to Mount Zion. And there, what do we see in Mount Zion? <clears throat> Chapter 12, verse 22. So we are these people, this pray, the normal praying believer, the normal praying assembly has this. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to mediates of angels, 
it does not say that we will come. Here it says we are come. We are come. We are already there. Spiritually, our head is there. Spiritually, the unseen, mysterious body of the Lord is with him. So dearly beloved, we are in Mount Zion. And we are in the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. We have come to the assembly of innumerable company of angels, myriads and myriads and thousands of thousands of angels, dearly beloved. To a general assembly, verse 23, and church of the firstborn. We have come to the church of the assembly and who are the firstborn? Firstborn are the men of God. Women of God, dearly beloved, that lived an overcoming life. They are here. They are in the heavenlies. There are overcomers, dearly beloved. And we are in that company. If we are not completely overcomers, but we have this company already, dearly beloved. Some have departed. Many are here among us. So remember what, uh, what the Lord is trying to say today is this, dearly beloved, take heart. This must be the praying believer. This must be the praying assembly that is assured and firm and founded on the foundation that is Christ and the, the city that God, the, whose architect and builder is God, whose foundation is unshakable, dearly beloved. So, to the General Assembly Church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. The spirits are made perfect, dearly remember. And to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkling of the blood, which speaks better than the blood of Abel. So, dearly beloved, we remember this. This is all about the Lord. The mediator that is Christ. And so we hold on to him. We grow in him. And we become, we are the normal praying believers. And the normal praying assembly. May the Lord speak to us in these last days. And continue to speak to us. Amen.